I'll just start with um, a question from, and again, people have to um, forgive me if I pronounce their names poorly, but this is a question from Pavlo Viknyansky, who is the leader of the student republic movement in Ukraine. They recently completed their winter student republic event. Uh, it was called Teams for the Future, and uh, I understand that the participants uh, were able to watch a video message from Peter Martinson of the, uh, of the LPAC basement team, which combined a strategic briefing with a more in-depth discussion of strategic method. Uh, Pavlo asks Lynn, he's, he's interested in the fact that the title of the event was Ireland and America, and he says people here often compare our country with Ireland because of parallels between the colonial history of Ireland with Britain and of Ukraine with Russia. In that context, Mr. LaRouche, how do you see the possibility of a more free development of Ukraine as a nation state in a community of equal nations, considering that we have such a powerful neighbor who is not always completely interested in the fair and just development of Ukraine? Well, <clears throat> my first answer on that question is, well, uh, let's unite around Vanovsky and his legacy, because that it, Vanovsky is an embodiment of both the best of Russia and of the Ukraine, both. And he was, he was in passion, though he was Russian in terms of sense of nation, in passion he was also much more moved by Ukraine. So that, that's the character of the situation. The prospects, we have to look at these things not as eligibility of nations as such for priorities in these matters. What we have to do without which, without which nothing will work. What we have to do is to bring about a sudden new order of cooperation among nations at this time. I'm talking not about some distant future thing. I'm talking about a general upheaval which is now in progress, whose successful outcome, if it were successful, would be a simultaneity of a change which had been intended by Franklin Roosevelt in particular in his approach to the post-war period during World War II. Unfortunately, he died, and the British butt kisser, shall we say, Truman, took over and turned everything over to uh, Churchill. So you had a, a great reversal of the policies of the United States as they had been under the leadership of Franklin Roosevelt, who was a true representative of his own ancestry, his ancestor Isaac Roosevelt, for example, who had founded the Bank of New York and been a close collaborator of uh, our first great finance minister. Uh, so that uh, we have come to a point where there's a general breakdown crisis of the planet. The crisis is rather complicated, but let me outline it in a few rather elementary features. First of all, the entire planet is going down the bucket, as of now. Now, you would say the situation in China is somewhat more stable than in Europe or South America or even the United States. You would say that India, while not like China is a very large nation with very powerful resources and a great number of very, very poor people, which represents a great problem. But despite the fact that these nations of Asia are not immediately presently caught up in the problems which face the European sector generally and the transatlantic sector, does not mean that they would survive what is now a threatened immediate collapse, chain reaction collapse of the entire world financial monetary system centered in the transatlantic region. If the United States goes down, as it could very easily now, the British Empire is already doomed to go down. 
And if the United States doesn't go down first, the British Empire will carry the world down first itself. Because the British system, which is an imperial system, a monetarist system, is itself hopelessly bankrupt. And the British system of bankings, which Jacob uh, Rothschild's uh, creation, the Interalpha Group, has a bad bank subsidiary called the BRIC. Russia now depends, under ministers such as Kudrin and so forth, on dependency on the BRIC. The BRIC is the lodestone around the neck of Russia. So the survival of Russia, which has a great deal of bearing on the survival of Ukraine, because Ukraine depends very much on, on its relationship to Russia, and when the relations between Ukraine and Russia are bad, they don't have to be integrated, but when the relations are good and scientifically oriented, you have a good situation for Russia and for Ukraine. But this depends upon the situation in the transatlantic region. Because the British Empire, which is what the BRIC is controlled by, uh, uh, that this empire is going down. This empire cannot survive. It is already doomed. Its prospects are hopeless. The British system, the inter Alpha Group, is hopelessly bankrupt and is existing by sucking the blood of neighboring nations such as Ireland. The Irish debt is largely to these institutions, which is a great bloodsucker, which is going down now. On what date it's going down is uncertain, but it is hopelessly doomed. And under the present policies of the British Empire, there's no, there's no sucker for it. It's finished. So the world is now faced with a global situation where you cannot pick and choose one part of the world by itself and say this part of the world is going to do this in its sovereign way. Nonsense. You have to have an international view. The international view has to be a moral view as well as a technologically and scientifically sound one. And I think it would, if we, we, the crisis we're going through now, the rate of increase of hyperinflation and the looting of the food supplies upon which the existence of the present human population depends is accelerating at such a rate that I don't think that the present governments of the United Kingdom and United States could outlive this present year without a great catastrophe. And when you say that the British Empire is going down, which the British Empire which controls pretty much all of Europe, including Russia and Ukraine, the fate of Ukraine and Russia uh, is controlled by the British interest, either through the British interest as directly or the British bad bank, which is the brick, which is what controls Russia. Now, I, to me, this is not a problem. That is, to, uh, if I have the power to do it, I know exactly what to do, and I could let this state bankruptcy go. It's called by the Glass-Steagall standard. All banking practices which do not conform to a Glass-Steagall standard or which is, the, which is the in the U.S. Constitution, actually, does not conform to that Glass-Steagall standard, is simply going to be wiped off the books because it will be returned to the banks, like the New York banks and the London banks, say, well, these are your assets and these are your losses. Eat them. Because we don't need you anymore. We never really did need you. We can, under government, under government law, we can establish a, banking, a federal banking system, or a similar thing, in every country. We can also bring these countries together under a common fixed exchange rate agreement among their respective currencies. And that is necessary because the great tasks which we have to perform are not simply the recovery task. We have a planet, and the characteristic of this planet is that we use certain resources for mankind. The degree of development resources required increases. There is no such thing as a fixed standard where a society can exist in perpetuum without any changes. The changes have to be increases in the power of productive productivity of mankind. And the resources become relatively depleted. So man's power must increase more than the depletion of resources we use. 
The means for doing this are all there. In science, it's all there. What we need is a science driver program, which raises what I call the platforms of economy, on what economies depend, and simply go ahead and invest. For example, we have a great project, the, the uh, Nuapa project, the North American Power, Water and Power Alliance. This system would change the character of the territory of North America from Canada, Alaska, the United States, mainly in the body of the United States, and down into northern Mexico, and would spread its influence. The project is far greater than any of the projects in China. The water project alone involved in this is greater than the Three Gorges Dam as a project, far greater. And these kinds of projects, which are based largely on the use of nuclear power and thermonuclear fusion power and beyond, will give mankind the ability to change our destiny on this planet, beginning now, at any time we choose. What we need to do is trash this present system. Re simply reestablish the concept of sovereign nation states. No more empires, no more such things as the Euro Alliance, which is a desperate effort. S then take our science, scientific knowledge, and what we can develop, we can develop projects which will perform what people today would consider miracles. We're involved in investigation of these kinds of things now. In the basement, for example, we're dealing with what, you know, what people have lodged away from for a long time. That the life on Earth has been conditioned by the characteristics of a galaxy, the galaxy to which we attach. The galaxy is not a stranger out there. The galaxy is what our, our solar system is a sort of a, 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 a pygmy to attach to it. Huh? And life on Earth has been shaped by the influence of galactic processes within the galaxy. The, that is, the, the pattern of life on Earth is developed, is governed by these kinds of principles. These principles are accessible. Huh? We can transform the Earth into a beautiful place. Forever. But this will mean we'll be also reaching out into other parts of the solar system and beyond to exert an influence from Earth, which is necessary for us to exert in order to protect life on Earth. This requires, among other things, an emphasis upon the language cultures of peoples, because it's only in the language cultures of people that the history of their ideas can be preserved. And therefore, they may have equality in other respects, but they have to translate that equality into their language culture, which is not just the language, but the language culture. So they have to express, in terms of the children coming up, what's the language culture of the children? You want the whole society and its children to participate in this thing. But you have a unity of a sense of mankind, of different cultures, same intention, same mission, same principle, but according to what our cultures let us do. So you need the independence of the respective cultures as independent societies. But you need also the cooperation of them, among them, in the form of a fixed exchange rate system among nations. We need then cooperation among these nations in the great projects which define the foundations for the future of all mankind, as benefits for each part of mankind. And it, it's that kind of approach, which I believe now is with immediate reach and placed in reach by what we've seen as the mass strike movement. The mass strike movement as being an assertion of principled ideas as to the nature of mankind, which we have seen spreads out from deep into the Arab world, throughout North Africa, throughout Europe, throughout the United States, and we know below our borders, that this movement, if it seeks, gains the authority which it deserves in reshaping the practices of, of nations and among nations, will provide us with the opportunity, with the scientific potential which I know presently exists, on which we are working, this, precisely this, means that we can create as if an instant, as Franklin Roosevelt had intended, 
had he not died when he did. To reorganize the world, to bring the nations of the world together under a fixed exchange rate system, to start to rebuild this world and rebuild the nations within the world as a cooperating body under a fixed exchange rate system. I think that what's happening now is the terrible conditions which afflict us, the threats against society, the hopelessness of these threats give man no choice but to reach out to those ideas which represent a safe haven in the future. I think that's an immediate thing, not a long-term thing. What we need to make is not a reform, we need to make a revolution. And that's the revolution. In that case, then, the present problems of Ukraine and Russia, whoosh, gone. They may still talk about it. <laughs>